Hello and welcome to worship for this the 24th and 25th of January 2021. Winter has started and there's lots of snow outdoors. If you hear a rumbling in the background of the video, that's my husband out plowing the driveway with the tractor. So don't be too distracted. For thousands of years, indigenous people have lived in this land on their own country. Their relationship with the land is at the center of their lives, and we acknowledge the past and present generations of Beothic and Mi'kmaq people of this island, and the Innu and Inuit people of Labrador, and their stewardship of these lands throughout the ages. This is a safe place for all people to worship, regardless of race, creed, age, ability, cultural background, nationality, sexual orientation, or gender identity. We are the sisters and brothers of all that is, cherishing the earth, embracing its life. So let us celebrate the richness and diversity of life as we light our community candle. And as we light our flame today, may it remind us of the ongoing process of evolution, reminding us of the first gasping breath, the first clumsy step, the first drop of warm milk, the first curious thought. All these are wonders of the universe. God who sets us on a journey of discovery, dream and grow, stir the spirit stretch our minds, grant the vision that we lack. Exploration brings new insights, changes, choices we must face. First, give us wisdom in deciding. Give us courage for the journey. Cherish only what is essential. There can be no turning back. And let us pray. Excite our hearts and minds creative life source to trace new truths to catch creation's flair, and to live within the context of compassion and care. If we can see what is happening today, we will know much about the past and the future. But if we can see the people with whom we live, we will know much about humanity. May it be so with us. Amen. I'm just going to put this candle down. we go. And we're going to sing a song. Unfortunately, because of the snow, I can't get out to where the rest of the singers are, so I'll just have to sing it by myself. It's called Standing in the Need of Prayer. It's an oldie but goodie. Not my brother nor my sister, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my brother nor my sister, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not the preacher nor the deacon, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not the preacher nor the deacon, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my father nor my mother, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my father nor my mother, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not the stranger nor my neighbor, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not the stranger nor my neighbor, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me. 
It's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Now, whether you take what is written in the Bible as fact, metaphor, myth, or story, listen to these words now for the meaning they hold for you on this day. And the first reading comes from the book of Jonah, chapter 3, verses 1 through 5 and 10. Next, God spoke to Jonah a second time. Up on your feet and on your way to the big city of Nineveh. Preach to them. They're in a bad way and I cannot ignore it any longer. This time, Jonah started off straight for Nineveh, obeying God's order to the letter. Nineveh was a big city very big. It took three days to walk across it. Jonah entered the city, went one day's walk, and preached. In 40 days, Nineveh will be smashed. The people of Nineveh listened and trusted God. They proclaimed a citywide fast and dressed in burlap to show their repentance. Everyone did it, rich and poor, famous and obscure, leaders and followers. God saw what they had done, that they had turned away from their evil lives. God did change God's mind about them. What God said God would do to them, God did not do. Our second reading comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 14 through 20. After Jesus was arrested, Sorry. After John was arrested, Jesus went to Galilee preaching the message of God. Time's up. God's kingdom is here. Change your life and believe the message. Passing along the beach of Lake Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew net fishing. Fishing was their regular work. Jesus said to them, come with me. I'll make a new kind of fisherman out of you. I'll show you how to catch men and women instead of perch and bass. They didn't ask questions. They dropped their nets and followed. A dozen yards or so along the beach, he saw the brothers James and John, Zebedee's sons. They were in the boat, mending their fish nets. Right off, he made the same offer. Immediately, they left their father Zebedee, the boat, and the hired hands, and followed. These readings invite us to embrace change. This change could be in many areas, our vision of or understanding of God, our personal plans, our way of life, or perish the thought, our congregational life. Jonah was not looking for a change of life when he received his call to go to Nineveh. In fact, he did everything he could think of not to go Jonah could not reconcile what he had been taught and believed with what he was being asked to do. To his understanding, God did not forgive the enemies of Israel, one of whom was Nineveh. They deserved nothing but destruction. But here was God saying, Go at once to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. Has God changed God's mind about Israel's enemies? God called Jonah to preach to an immoral, unclean, and oppressive people, giving them one last chance to repent. Nineveh is so big, it takes three days to walk from one side to the other. Jonah, still in a snit about having to deliver this news, even though he himself has been given a second chance, walks one day into the city. He doesn't even bother to get to the center before announcing that Nineveh has 40 days to smarten up or be destroyed. Without internet or social media, the news went viral, and the people repented, fasting and wearing sackcloth. Even the animals fasted, and Jonah went into a sulk because God forgave. The book of Jonah is profoundly theological, with its message of God's universal love for all people. 
It shows how whole communities can repent and change the direction of their history. What would it take for your community to change injustice, be it homelessness, food insecurity, addictions, or so many others? What more will it take for the global community to seriously change our ways to slow down climate change? A recent report has shown that even a global pandemic has not had a significant effect. John Dominic Crossan writes of the social and economic conditions of Galilee at the time of Jesus. He, Jesus, lived in a time of great poverty for the peasant class of which fishermen were a part. They worked long and hard, but with the fishing industry heavily controlled by Rome, set prices for the catch, declining stocks, and high taxation. Is it any wonder that Andrew, Simon, James, and John were so willing to walk away from it? I've said this many times before. I think our image of the disciples has been dictated to us through art, illustrated children's Bibles, and movies, where the disciples are always portrayed as full-grown men. What happens if we let our imaginations recast the disciples as teenagers? The first church youth group, perhaps. Young, enthusiastic, teachable, ready for an adventure, and probably not weighed down with family and responsibilities. Rob Bell, a popular theologian, talks of the education system of the first century Jewish male. All boys went to primary school to learn the basics of their religion and tradition. Of those, the best students went on to the next level to study the laws and the prophets. And of those, only the very best in debate and study would be chosen by rabbis as their disciples. Our boys obviously had not made it to the upper levels of education and were back with their fathers, learning the ways of boats, nets, and fish. Good, honest work, but probably not the life of excitement and adventure boys might like. Jesus may have known, may have been known to the fishermen. Maybe they had heard him teaching at the synagogue on the Sabbath. People were beginning to listen and follow, and follow him, both men and women. This too is a story of change. Jesus is changing the way he has been doing things by gathering some willing helpers to train and mentor. Jesus' aim was to teach others about God. He preached on the religious and political concerns of his time and place. His focus was not on some mystic realm beyond time, nor on some present world which was simply to be accepted. Rather, his focus was on a new realm of God, here and now, and ready to emerge. While Jesus never intended to start a movement, much less a new religion. The calling of the disciples can certainly be seen as the beginning of a movement which centered on the character and teaching of Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus called to the brothers to use their skills as fishermen to fish for people. I've always found that a disturbing image. When we catch fish, we do so usually to kill them for food and the ways we catch them, with hooks and spears and traps and nets, are neither stressless or painless to the animals being caught. In fact, I imagine it is rather painful and distressing. So would I willingly want to be caught? Scholar Ched Myers offers a different interpretation, which suggests that phrases like fishers of men and hooking of fish are Hebrew euphemisms for judgment upon the rich. High taxes, regulations, poverty. When Jesus invites common folk to join him in his struggle to overturn the existing order of power and privilege, of course they drop everything and go. 
they go to learn of a reimagining, reimagined world where, where they learn about justice. They learn how to walk beyond the boundaries of their social class. They learn how to inspire others. Being a disciple is not a call out of the world, but into an alternative social practice. To be a disciple in the 21st century requires us to engage in both social analysis as well as theological reflection. To remember that biblical stories are not just earthly stories with heavenly meaning, but earthy stories with heavy meaning. To be a disciple then and now is about accepting the urgent invitation to break with business as usual and join the reimagining of the world and our place in it, both personally and communally. Jesus called people from their ordinary lives and asked them to use their everyday skills to bring into being a new realm. What of your skills can you use? Will you be gardeners of the good? teachers of humankind, contractors of community. And let us pray. Gracious God, we learn from you, we learn of you from one another. We remember those who have taught us of your love and ask that you bless and keep them. We discover you when you call us by name and remember that you know each of us and call each of us by name. We trust that you know the truth and will share it with us so that we may be honest and cur courageous always. We want to share the things we know to be good about the world in which we live. We hope in your care for all that concerns us. We recognize the circumstances that cause pain, death, danger, and frustration in the lives of our neighbors and all of creation. We entrust all people, places, and things into your care. And we continue our prayers with our Abba, Abba prayer, which is written in the spirit of the Lord's Prayer. And if you prefer to pray the traditional Lord's Prayer, please do so. Great divine spirit of love that is at the core of everything and from which all life flows, we acknowledge your healing and transforming power. May the spirit of unconditional love and forgiveness flow through each of us and enable the realm of love to spread throughout the world. Like the flowers in the fields, ensure that we have the basics we need to live and give us the love and commitment to ensure that others have what they need too. Give us the courage to acknowledge when we have done wrong, to seek forgiveness from those we have hurt and to forgive those who have hurt us, so that we may be reconciled. We acknowledge the power of self-giving love to transform individual hearts and the world. We recommit ourselves to the unconditional love of others and the work of justice and peace. Amen. So let's join in singing, Jesus, you have come to the lake shore. Jesus, you have come to the lake shore, looking neither for wealthy nor wise ones. You only ask me to follow humbly. Oh, Jesus, with your eyes you have searched me. And while smiling, had spoken my name. Now my port's left on the shoreline behind me. By your side, I will seek other seas. You know so well my possessions. My boat carries no gold and no weapons. You will find there my nets and labor. Oh, Jesus, with your eyes you have searched me 
and was smiling, had spoken my name. Now my boat left on the shoreline behind me. By your side, I will seek other seas. You know so well my now oh, you, you need my hands full of caring Through my labors to give others rest And constant love that keeps on loving Oh Jesus, with your eyes you have searched me and was smiling, had spoken my name. Now my boat's left on the shoreline behind me. By your side I will seek other seas. You who have fished other oceans, ever longed for by souls who are waiting, my loving friend, as thus you called me. Oh, Jesus, with your eyes you have searched me, and while smiling had spoken my name. Now my boat's left on the shoreline behind me. By your side I will seek other seas. The creativity of God is never confined to this sacred place or time. So go and travel with the God who is found in ordinary and surprising places. We receive fragments of holiness, glimpses of eternity, brief moments of insight. Let us gather them up for the precious gifts that they are and renewed by their grace move boldly into the unknown. And may God the star maker cradle and circle you. May God the storyteller beckon and encourage you. And may God the life changer challenge you and cherish you. May you walk in the light of God's love and laughter all the moments of your nights and days. Amen.